Hello, my name is Zach Brim. I'm an assistant professor in the University of Florida IFAS Department of Agronomy, working from the Tropical Research and Education Center. My focus is research and extension in agroecology. The systems framework is a foundational principle for agroecology. In this segment, I describe the agroecosystems concept defined by its parts and organization. Agroecosystems scale in biologically and ecologically meaningful ways. From the organism at the smallest scale through population, community, and ecosystem scales, which can be thought of as progressively larger or more encompassing scales. All of the scales span multiple dimensions in space and All of the scales are impacted by the environment. The environment is defined by the non living surroundings that impact biological growth and reproduction water, temperature, light, and soil, for example. An organism is an individual form of life, this individual tomato plant. Organisms occurring in an agroecosystem can include many other plants or animals that are farmed or part of farms. With production in mind, that organism of interest in an agroecosystem tends to be a crop or livestock. Branch architecture and leaf photosynthesis of plants are ways to characterize the plant organism, plant growth, health, and Production from the cellular level to the whole plant level is important to understand how the plant organism functions in the agroecosystem. A group of organisms in the same species is a population. This example is a monoculture of tomato plants, or a population of tomatoes. Here are two more plant populations. On the left is sugar, a crop population that tends to take up a large land area. On the right is cherry orchard another monoculture plant population. Understanding how plants grow in a population is important for field level crop management and production. Annual populations are replaced each year, while perennial populations persist across many years. Communities are a grouping of organisms of different species, but similar taxonomic groups, like plants. Members of the plant community can help the focal crop improve environmental conditions like soil quality and wind control. These plant cooperators include cover crops rotated with focal crops in time, intercrops spaced between focal crops, and buffer strips that surround the field. In livestock systems, plant cooperators are known as forage. Plant competitors are best known as weeds. They pose challenges to the focal crop like shade or disease. Here are some more examples of plant communities. On the left is a selection of forage crops two species of grass and a perennial legume that exist in pasture. Perhaps this agroecosystem does a little bit better because of the diversity of those forages, a group of cooperators. In the middle is a population of beans being taken over by clusters of weeds, those undesirable competitors. Crop plants can also be grouped as a community depicted on the right, the cabbage in the foreground and the tomato in the back. These annual crops interact indirectly across the field but perhaps also across time between different plantings. Of course, there are also many more plants in between those crop rows and in the surrounding area to consider as well. In agroecosystems with a single major focal crop, I've seen folks quick to judge the good and the bad species around the farm. Remember, all the plants contribute to the biodiversity and biological productivity of the system. Other taxonomic groups that form communities include the invertebrates, the invertebrate community can include microbes and insects in the system. As with plants, some are beneficial and some are harmful. Invertebrate communities add to biological and ecological diversity. Beneficial invertebrates can include pollinators, predators, parasitoids, and microbes living on plants and in the soil. Harmful invertebrates can include herbivores that eat plant leaves, bore plant stems, and suck plant fluids. Other harmful invertebrates can deliver or be the cause of plant diseases. The vertebrate community also adds to biological and ecological diversity. Beneficial vertebrates can leave manure for plant nutrition, eat weeds, and eat plant pests. Harmful vertebrates eat the crop or promote weeds. The grouping of multiple communities like plants, invertebrates and vertebrates is the ecosystem. The ecosystem's foundation is the environment that sets the stage for the interaction of the many organisms, populations, and communities that exist in the system. A great example of a diversity of environments and ecosystems occurs in my neighborhood of South Florida. 
Top left is what I call soil in the Redland Ag area. There's only about a centimeter or two of organic matter before you get to the limestone bedrock, which has to be crushed and plowed to do most agriculture in the Redland. Otherwise, you can only farm the surface. Bottom left is deep muck soil from the Everglades Ag area just south of Lake Okeechobee. It's mostly organic matter. The farming in the Redland and Everglades Ag areas is very different. In addition to knowing their environment, farmers are often considering the plant-animal interactions. Some pollinators and foragers are on the bottom right. Top right is the insidious bug, which is predating the scale bug. So many of our current agricultural disciplines focus on one of these pieces, the entomologist or the soil and water scientist or the plant agronomist. Agroecology seeks to synthesize the many parts and interactions in the agroecosystem with a vision across space and time. The land around a farm provides resources to the farm but may contribute to disruptions. Other farms, urban areas, and natural areas are a part of that surrounding land. People play a critical role in the management of the farm. We all consume the products harvested from the farm. The spirals across the agroecosystem represents the variability and dynamics occurring across space and time. On the left are the natural systems across Florida, the pine rockland, the scrubland, and the pine forest from south to north. The map shows cropland diversity across Florida. If you understand how the natural and agricultural ecosystems are distributed across the state, then you can understand the regional context for your farm. The regional spatial extent expands from the farm level to the landscape and outward to the global. The biology and ecology interactions act across the agroecosystem scales. It is sometimes challenging to define the boundary of an agroecosystem scale accurately because those boundaries are diffuse and dynamic. Energy and materials flow throughout the agroecosystem in constant transportation and transformation. In that way, scales can also be understood by their connectivity. The social connection to the biological and ecological agroecosystems includes the people involved as managers and impacted as neighbors or consumers. Including the consumers of agroecosystem products expands the agroecosystem to the food system scale. This is the agroecosystem diagram with highlights that represent the type of interaction individual plants, invertebrates, and vertebrates have on the tomato crop. The difference between cooperators in blue and competitors in red and where those lines blur is key to how agroecosystems operate. Following this segment, I encourage you to find a blank sheet of paper and several colored pens, pencils, markers, or crayons. Draw a picture of all the things that you know about your favorite agroecosystem. Include those elements and perhaps depictions of how they are organized in space and time. Draw arrows to indicate how each of the elements develop and interact. Think about how the management in these agroecosystems can affect the interactions of dynamics of the system. Consider how agroecosystems are embedded and add to your drawing something that represents a scale smaller and something for a scale larger. What is the name of your agroecosystem?